Hello there, I'm Mike and welcome to Theme Park 101. Today, we'll be taking a look at all the rides, shows and attractions found at Universal Studios Hollywood in Los Angeles, California for 2024. Stick around until the end of the video for my hot tips for visiting the park, as well as a little look at what new attractions will be coming in the near future. As you make your way through Universal City Walk, filled with lots of shopping and dining locations, you will come to the infamous Universal Globe and enter through the legendary Universal Arches. Due to its location, the park is broken up into two sections. The upper lot features most of the park's family attractions and shows, with the lower lot focusing on other popular Universal franchises, as well as being home to the many different sound stages and set pieces used to make some of our favourite TV shows and movies. You will enter into the upper lot and as you walk down Universal Boulevard, you will come to Universal Plaza, a central point which allows you to explore all the different areas within the upper lot. As with all my guides, I will head around the park clockwise which takes us to the illumination section of the upper lot, starting with the secret life of pets off the leash. This is a fun dark ride where you are transformed into lost puppies as you explore the streets of New York. The ride features a fantastic queue line that has some nice interactive elements, as well as plenty of amazing audio animatronics of all the furry creatures from the secret life of pets. Opposite is Despicable Me Minion Mayhem, a motion simulator ride that transforms you into minions before heading on an adventure through many different scenes. You'll encounter all your favourite characters from the movies as you come face to face with lots of dangerous machinery. You will exit through super silly stuff where you will have a wide selection of merchandise from the popular movie franchise. Carrying on with the Despicable Me theme, you can visit the outdoor play area, Super Silly Funland, which is comprised of a wet zone with over 80 different water play features, a dry zone, which allows younger visitors to climb, jump, slide and explore, a load of different carnival games giving you a chance to win a prize, and an aerial carousel attraction called Silly Swirly. This will soar and spin guests around for an amazing view of Super Silly Funland, all aboard your very own bug ride vehicle. As you head back to Universal Plaza, you will come to a small DreamWorks section, which includes the DreamWorks Theatre. Currently, it is showing Kung Fu Panda Adventure. The pre-show includes characters from all the popular DreamWorks films, such as Shrek, Madagascar, and Trolls. You will then be taken through to the theatre, where you will go on an adventure with Poe and friends as they fulfil a quest for the Emperor. This is a fun show, and the theatre is designed to be easily changed to other future films, which makes it a a great addition to the park. Nearby, you can also meet some of your favourite Trolls characters at the special meet and greet area. Before we head to the magical land next door, I can't help but mention another amazing show, Waterworld, that is located near the entrance of the park. This is a live stunt show featuring a variety of spectacular effects and stunts, including pyrotechnics, fire, and of course, water effects. It has been running since the film's release in 1995 and is a fan favourite. So make Make sure you arrive early and catch a showing. We now head to the wizarding world of Harry Potter. Hogsmeade features plenty of shopping and dining locations where you can buy a wand in Ollivanders, chug on some butter beer in the Three Broomsticks, or try on robes in Dervish and Bangs. The possibilities are truly endless. Housed in Hogwarts Castle is the main attraction, Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, a motion-based dark ride. The queue line is fantastically themed to the gardens and rooms within Hogwarts, which feels like an attraction within itself. The ride explores many different recognisable scenes from the books and films, and features a plethora of Harry Potter characters and creatures in a mixture of screens, audio animatronics and special effects. This is a fantastic attraction that always has a long wait, so I would suggest either investing in an express pass or joining the single rider line to bring your wait time down. The other attraction in this area is Flight of the Hippogriff, a junior outdoor roller coaster where Hagrid teaches visitors how to fly a hippogriff. You will see plenty of theming throughout, including Hagrid's hut and the Forbidden Forest, as well as some great views of all the wizarding world. Throughout the day, you can watch one of two shows. 
Frog Choir is an a cappella performance of some Hogwarts students and their frogs as they sing familiar wizarding songs. And the Tri Wizard Spirit Rally sees the students of Hogwarts, Boobatons, and Durmstrang perform dances to cheer on their classmates. In the evening, you can enjoy the special projection show, The Nighttime Lights at Hogwarts Castle. It celebrates the four houses of Hogwarts, backed by the legendary John Williams musical backdrop. The show changes throughout the year with unique versions during the Halloween and winter holidays. Also, throughout the land, there are many different interactive wand experiences which helps bring the wizarding world to life. Just like in Orlando and other Universal Resorts, Hogsmeade has been a huge success for good reason. And even if you're a casual Harry Potter fan, you can't help but feel the magic in the wizarding world of Harry Potter. If you're enjoying the guide so far, don't forget to hit the like button as it really helps us to share it to more viewers. Next to Hogsmeade is the theme park's signature attraction, the Studio Tour. This is a 45 to 60 minute ride which uses tram vehicles to take visitors from the theme park's upper lot to the back lot, where actual filming of many shows and movies take place. The tour will take you through many different recognizable film sets, including the Courthouse Square, which you will probably recognize from the back to the future trilogy, the crashed plane scene from War of the Worlds, and the Bates Motel from Psycho. Along the way, you'll see how some of the effects are used within movies with the flash flood and earthquake segments. There are also three other exciting elements throughout your ride, including King Kong 360 3D, where you will be taken through a darkened tunnel and see King Kong take on dinosaurs and other creatures from Skull Island. You'll encounter Jaws in Amity Island and become one of the family in Fast and Furious Supercharged. This is an incredible attraction that is worth the price of the admission on its own. Make sure you take a ride on the studio tour when you visit Universal Studios Hollywood. The final area in the upper lot is Springfield, the home of The Simpsons. You can have a beer in Moe's Tavern, grab some food in Krusty Burger, and see a host of characters throughout this amazing land. The main attraction is The Simpsons Ride, a huge simulator ride that replaced the Back to the Future attraction. On the ride, you'll be introduced to a cartoon theme park called Krustyland. However, Sideshow Bob has escaped from prison and seeks revenge on Krusty and the Simpson family by taking over Krustyland and destroying the ride. On the six minute ride through, you will recognize plenty of popular Simpsons characters as you try to escape from Sideshow Bob's demolition attempts. The ride utilizes the huge IMAX screens and ride cars from the previous attraction. Near the entrance of the ride, Krustyland Carnival Games gives you the chance to win a Simpsons themed prize at the various Midway stations. Don't forget to stick around until the end of the video to see a sneak peek at a brand new attraction that will link the upper lot to the next section in this guide, the lower lot. This can be accessed by a series of escalators located in Springfield and offers some amazing views of the back lot and other parts of the San Fernando Valley. The first attraction you will come to is Jurassic World The Ride, a boat ride where you will be shown different dinosaur exhibits until some escaped dinosaurs cut the tour short as Owen Claire and the Raptor Squad help you to escape the formidable creatures. The ride uses a mixture of high-tech screens and animatronics to showcase the dinosaurs, including the recently added Indominus Rex animatronic. There are some drops and you will get wet on this attraction, so make sure you bring a raincoat or you can just dry off in the hot LA sunshine. The Jurassic World area also has a raptor encounter where you can meet everybody's favorite Velociraptor, Blue, as well as the newly added friendly triceratops and baby raptor and there is also an outdoor interactive play area called dino play where younger visitors can climb cargo nets excavate fossils explore a t-rex skull or simply ride some slides opposite jurassic world is revenge of the mummy the ride this is an indoor roller coaster themed to the popular mummy franchise you will be transported to 1944 and into the tomb of imhotep and despite warnings you load into the minecar ride vehicles as you go further into the tomb. It features some amazing special effects and the roller coaster has the ability to move from scene to scene at an incredible pace. This is currently the most exciting coaster in the park and due to the dark setting it can be quite scary at times so it is perfect for fans of thrill rides. 
Next up is Transformers The Ride 3D. This exciting 3D dark ride will see you team up with Optimus Prime as you battle against the Decepticons in many exciting show scenes, featuring a variety of effects. You can also meet Megatron, Bumblebee or Optimus Prime in a meet and greet area close to the ride building throughout the day. The next and final area is the newest in the park, Super Nintendo World, which was added in 2023. You enter through a warp pipe and end up in Peach's Castle before the big reveal of the amazing land. You'll see plenty of your favorite Nintendo characters, Bowser's Castle, and lots of Easter eggs that will please even the casual Nintendo fans. You can buy a power-up band and connect through the Universal Studios Hollywood app, which allows you to interact with a lot of the environment and perform key challenges. Challenges. This is a series of challenges spread throughout the world that will let you collect coins and then take on Bowser Jr. in an epic boss battle. The main attraction of the land is Mario Kart Bowser's Challenge. This is a dark ride that uses AR to enhance the experience of riding in your very own Mario Kart race. You will go through some classic scenes from the games and you are able to use items like shells to disable other riders as well as using the steering wheel to help collect items and coins. Throughout the day, you can meet Princess Peach, Toad, and of course Mario and Luigi in their special meet and greet areas. There are also plenty of shopping and dining locations throughout this immersive world, which completes this amazing addition to Universal Studios Hollywood. Due to its popularity, you currently have to make a special reservation to enter the land. It doesn't cost anything and can be done through the Universal Studios Hollywood app. You can purchase early access to enter Super Nintendo World an hour early which costs between $20 to $30. To spread the fun, a brand new Nintendo themed Power Up Cafe has opened in the upper lot to celebrate the one year anniversary of Super Nintendo World. So that wraps up all the current shows and attractions in the park. My hot tips are definitely to arrive early and if you want to check out Super Nintendo World without the long lines, then paying extra for the early access is well worth it. Always check the park hours on the website before your visit as it can vary quite a lot, which could mean an extra four hours in the park on certain days. The big attraction that is currently under construction in the park is a brand new unique roller coaster themed to the popular Fast and Furious franchise. Rumored to be called Fast and Furious Hollywood Drift, it will feature spinning ride cars that will replicate drifting as well as a number of inversions. It also utilizes the hillside between the upper and lower lots and will go over the escalators. This thrilling attraction is much needed in the park and will be a welcome addition for fans of coasters and the Fast and Furious franchise. No official opening date has been announced, but we hope it will be completed by the end of the year or early 2025. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you would like to help support the channel, then consider subscribing for free or joining as a member for exclusive early access to videos and other exciting perks. If you want to know more about the Universal Orlando Resort, then check out this guide here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Theme Park 101.